Welcome everyone. I am going to try and do a quick tutorial on setting up a factory planet for planetary interaction. What this means is a planet where you take raw materials or processed planetary materials and convert them up the PI chain. So we'll go ahead and get started. I just need to scope out which planet I want to use. We're going to go to planet 11. And for this tutorial, I'm going to be making rocket fuel. Um, or not rocket fuel, I'm going to be making uh, robotics for POS fuel. So the first thing we're going to need is a command center, which I have in the hold of my ship. You have to have this in the cargo of your ship to launch it in space, and you have to be in space. Uh, if you live in wormholes like I do, you need to be uh, anywhere in space. You can actually be inside your force field, which is kind of handy because that way you don't get attacked by people trying to violence your space boat. So we're going to plop this down. I like this peninsula for no apparent reason because it's close. Close that window out. And let's just hide that. We'll hit submit. And that's going to confirm down the command center. The first thing I'm going to do is fully upgrade this to this character's levels. Um, if you're brand new to PI, you'll notice a different... Uh, this, this little bar right here tells you how much power grid and how much CPU you get out of your command center. Uh, there's a cost for upgrading each level. Uh, at the base level, you get one of these bars in each uh, level of command center upgrades you learn will tick you up a notch. Um, generally speaking, if you want to get serious about PI, you probably want to go to at least level four. Um, I'm in the process of training to level five right now so that I can fully handle uh, all the power grid and CPU I'll need. And you'll see why in a few minutes. So I'm going to hit upgrade and accept this. So now because this is a factory planet, all I really need to be worried about is having a place for my goods to come in, processing it through the chain, and a place for my goods to go back out. Um, so the first thing we're going to do uh, is we're going to get a launch pad, and I'm going to put that launch pad just a little bit, this kind of looks like Arabia. Um, I'm just going to throw that launch pad right here. And then I'm going to submit that down. Once you know what you're doing, you don't have to submit at every step. Um, but when you're starting, it might be useful to play around with it a little bit. Uh, okay, so for robotics, we're actually going to be converting four different uh, tier one goods. So they're going to go from raw materials. Those materials will be in case you care, noble metals, base metals, heavy metals, and non-CS crystals. I am harvesting those on other planets and converting them from the raw material to the processed material, or the P1. Uh, so I'm going to have uh, ready to go precious metals, reactive metals, toxic metals, and chiral structures. Um, so what I need to do is set up this command or this launch pad to import those P1s. Uh, and then change them up into the P2s, or the refined commodities, and then uh, send them up one more level up to the specialized commodity, or the P3, which is robotics. There's a fourth tier, uh, but for logistical reasons it's tedious to do those, so I'm just going up to robotics. I'm also doing robotics because it's used in POS fuel, which is always in demand, so you can usually get a pretty good market for it. So, uh, let's see here. To make robotics, I'm going to need 10 units of mechanized parts and consumer electronics. So let's start out, well, let's start out with processors. Step back. So I'm going to need a high-tech plant. Um, you need that to make, so well, let's see here. Maybe I just need the advanced. It's been a while since I've done this. We'll put it down. We're going to go to the schematics on the plant, and I'm looking for robotics. Oh, there we go. So if I look at robotics, 
we'll see that it uses 10 mechanical parts and 10 consumer electronics to make three robotics, uh, which is great. The only problem that you'll run into with this is if we build another factory. Um, well, let's go ahead. I'm going to select robotics. I'm going to hit install. And I'm going to take the results and I'm going to put them into my launch pad. Oh, there's no link. Oops. Let's make a link. Now let's go back. So I've already put the schematic in, so it's showing what it's going to make. I'm going to go to the products, grab them, I'm going to create a route back to the launch pad. So what you see now is that little line right there, the dotted line is moving. It's showing you the flow of goods once that job completes. But taking a step back, let's take a look at this schematic again. I need 10 mechanical parts and consumer electronics to make my robotics. Okay, so I'm going to get another advanced industrial facility. Mm, let's close it. This will make sense. Let's make another advanced industrial facility. I'm going to offset it and you'll see why in a few moments. There's one. I need to make two different things, so I'm going to put two of these down. So now let's take a look at this guy. Well, let's set the links up. What's going to happen is I'm going to import into this and I'm going to shunt the raw materials all the way to the end of the chains that will be on here. And then it will all flow back towards this launch pad in the end. So I'm using the same launch pad to get stuff in and out. So let's go over here and let's take a look at the mechanical parts item. There's mechanical parts. Okay, so we have the inputs. We have 40 reactive metal, 40 precious metal. And that pumps out five mechanical parts. And that's a problem because we need 10 of those. And we kind of want everything to run on a continuous cycle. So what that means is I'm going to need two of these factories producing mechanical parts for every factory producing robotics. So I'll go ahead and install that. Create my route. And I'm going to build... another factory in the chain here. And I'm just going to daisy chain these. Um, this doesn't work for extraction as well, but it works just fine for production. Um, so now we're going to go here. We're going to get that second mechanical part. Going to install it. Going to route it. Good to go. So over here, I'm going to grab the other item that's needed for this particular chain. I'm going to get Consumer Electronics. I'm going to send it all to my other facility. And there we go. So now, at its base, this is set up the last step is going to be putting my items into the launch pad. Um, and once I have that, I'll add that to the end of this video. Um, so what I'll end up doing is routing. Right now you can see in the routes here, robotics are in, but nothing's going out to these factories. And I'm actually waiting on my other planets to start producing that stuff. So we'll cover that later. But what you can see right now if I go to try and build something, oh, so we look at the command center. So if I look at the command center, I've used about 30% of my CPU and about a quarter of my power, which means I can actually build two more setups exactly like this, and that will make it uh, quite easy to have a lot of production pumping out. Uh, it's also handy because these launch pads can only hold 10,000 meters cubed. But if we go to the launch and we look at the customs office, we can hold 35,000 meters cubed. So having three launch pads lets me pretty much fill this whole thing up, transfer it all down in one go, let it run for a few days, and ignore it. So I'll just walk through this process uh, three more times so you can see how it works. And then once I have the rest of the stuff, I'll show you guys how to make it all flow through the system. 
So we'll put down the launch pad. We'll put one advanced industrial facility. And then we're going to daisy chain the additional facilities right off it. I'm trying to get these as close as possible. It doesn't matter really. Um, but if you're on a bigger planet, every little ounce of link can help, especially if you get into more crowded builds where you're trying to do the, the P4 tier materials instead of P3. So again, and I always work these backwards like this uh, so that I can route the output as I go so that I don't forget a routing step um, because that can cost you a little bit of isk if you make a mistake and ruin uh, a day or a week's production that's never fun so making it backwards makes it a little easier it's also easier to uh, route in factors you have to route to something that will accept what you're trying to route to so it has to have the right things set up now I'm just double clicking I'm doing it the fast way Just double clicking every step of the way. So there we go. So there's the second little part of this triad. And now we'll do the last chunk. And these don't have to be right here. I just have a habit of putting them in this pattern because mentally I find that it helps me keep track of what's going on. If you want to be really fun, you can get all geometric with your patterns. I've done that in the past. Linking up the last set of links. These links are, un are omnidirectional, so you can do them in whatever order you want. We'll just do this last bit of robotics. Well, let's try and do it the other way and show you what happens. Let's take a consumer electronics, install, Create route to here, and it says invalid commodity not an ingredient in current schematic. So I actually have to do these backwards um, because I have to have the next schematic loaded. Uh, so let's cancel that. The joys of Eve. So let's put in robotics, route it around, then do some more consumer electronics. Ah, my double clicking is not helping me tonight. Um, and as you can see, I've been kind of talking my way through this whole process. Once you understand how to do it, um, setting these up is a fairly quick process. Uh, I can set up a harvesting planet, for example, in about four and a half minutes, and that's for everything you need. And this one I've spent about 13 minutes in this video, 14 minutes. Um, so there, we've got everything all set up. Uh, we've used um, most of the CPU. If I had uh, the fifth level, I could probably fit a fourth tier of this, and there's some fun stuff you can do to, uh, on some more advanced factory planets. Um, you can maneuver it around a little more. Um, so there you go. The last step is going to be, uh, once I have the actual raw materials to put into these launch pads, I will show you guys how to route everything into the uh, initial advanced factories and then how it will all flow through. Okay, I managed to go pick up all of my PI, uh, all of my P1s. Um, and as you can see here, I've, I've filled up these uh, launch pads, and I'll explain that in a second, but just to take a step back. Um, the setup to get to this factory planet is, you'll see here in my planet list, I have five planets. Uh, this is the fifth planet. Uh, on each of the other planets, what I'm doing is running um, what I call strip mines. Uh, and I'll make a video about these as well. But essentially the way strip mines work is you have one extractor head extracting one thing, pumps it into a buffer in the middle here, 
uh, the buffer storage facility pumps everything out to these factories and then that routes straight out to the launch pad. So what I'm doing is maximizing um, how much of a single good I'm getting uh, and making the most out of the CPU I have, uh, the CPU and the power grid I have on this planet. Um, and so I have four of these. Uh, this one is empty because I just dumped it out, but this one we're making noble metals, or I'm sorry, we're making precious metals. This planet we're doing Uh, heavy metals into, I believe, toxic metals. And then over here, um, yeah, as you can see, we have another planet, and these all have this very simple shape. It's very easy to lay this shape down once you get used to it. It also saves a lot of um, link space because everything is so tight together. Um, and then we've got the last planet, uh, just one more. Uh, so then what I do is I go, I go to all the launch pads, I pick everything up, transfer it out, pick it up from the POCOs, and then take it straight to the customs office for my factory planet. And uh, that leads to one of the reasons I have three of these put together. Um, if I go to the customs office here, uh, you'll see, as I mentioned before, you can hold 35,000 uh, in the customs office, but you can only hold 10,000 in each of these launch pads. So at a certain point, uh, instead of increasing the complexity off of one launch pad, you can um, set it up with multiple launch pads so that you can always keep your buffer moving around, as it were. Um, <clears throat> and then you'll also see when I transferred things into these launch pads, I transferred things in equal amounts and left a little bit of leftover in the, in the customs office. Um, and that's just because it makes it easier to kind of keep inventory levels uh, constant. Um, so I always recommend doing that just because it makes it easier for you to manage, especially if you start running multiple characters, doing PI, uh, if you're up converting past the, the P2 or P3 level that I'm working on. If you're going up to P4s, you're going to need a pretty complex chain of planets, possibly with other players. So trying to keep your numbers manageable is always a good thing. So that said, um, oh, one other consideration is how long this cycle takes. How long does it take you to burn through a full um, a full load here? If you get a full 10k in here, um, I think usually with this setup it takes a little under two days. Um, so you can also kind of plan your cycles and your harvesting and your converting out off of that, so that you only have to log in. Um, well, you can log in as often as you want, but you only have to touch this every two days. Um, to, to get the maximum benefit out of what your factories can do. Um, so anyway, now let's go to the final boring part where we have to actually route everything. Um, it's probably the worst part of this whole setup. Uh, so to go back, we've already routed these guys that are making the P2s into our P3 factory. Uh, so it's already got all of the routing set up here. We just need to go in and set up the final step which is routing from the launch pad into these first sets of factories. So I need toxic metals and chiral structures. And unfortunately, the only good way we have to do this is to go to the launch pad and manually map out our routes. And so I just go through every one of these uh, and then for the mechanical parts it's reactive and precious in this particular setup it's pretty easy to sort out what you have and haven't done because i'm using four different goods um, if you start doing a system where you have various amounts of the same good going to different locations uh, that can get a bit tedious but i did it easy here so we'll just keep on going. Toxic metal. And sometimes, if you really want to get into this, the easiest way to do it. Oh, that first one didn't take. Just to kind of come up with your own little system uh, for remembering how to set these up, especially if you start doing a more complex system. I am not doing a great job of clicking tonight. 
Here we go. One nice thing, it you may not notice this, but the little yellow semicircles, or in, the, in some cases it'll be um, thirds of the border, will fill up as you do this, showing you what's going on, and the, uh, the routes themselves will start moving back and forth. Uh, the links down there, you'll see the little dotted lines are moving in the direction that they're sending stuff. So that's always a good sanity check while you're doing this to get everything sorted out. Now this may seem tedious, and it may seem like a heck of a lot of work, um, and it can be, um, especially when you first do the setup. But if you do the setup right, um, you know, this whole video is going to be about 20, maybe 30 minutes long. Um, and it's taking me this long because I'm trying to explain what I'm doing while I'm doing it, um, which of course slows things down. What am I missing? Reactive. Um, once you get used to this, you can set up your entire solar system um, really fast across a couple characters. Um, and if you're using one account that has level four skills, uh, this basic approach right here uh, can net you pretty easily if you keep up with it. Uh, you know, somewhere between 800 million to over a billion if you play the market smart um, per month uh, for a 28-day month. Uh, so it's it's pretty minimal effort once you set it up. I think it takes me about four to five minutes to set up each of those P1 planets, and then if I wasn't talking through this, it'd take me about 15 minutes maybe to set this planet up. So you're looking at you know an hour of work per character, uh, and then after that, you know, 15, 20 minutes every couple days uh, to just pretty much print money. Um, all you have to do is get it to market. So it's kind of worth sticking through this, especially if you have a schedule that doesn't let you do some other PI activities. It's a nice way to just baseline grow your wallet. So anyway, let's submit. And boom, everything is humming away. And so now, when I come back in a couple days to do the next cycle of getting rid of this, or picking up my P1s and dropping them off, I'll also get to offload a whole bunch of robotics. And I'll get to sell them, and it'll be very nice. So uh, thank you for watching. Uh, if you have any questions, definitely add them to comments. If you're interested, uh, hit me up in-game. The character is uh, Grimish, the same as my name for the YouTube account. Uh, and if you're interested in wormholes or wormhole space, feel free to drop me a line or look up my corporation. I'm in New Jovian Exploration Department, which is part of the Abandoned Apart Alliance. And we have places for everyone who wants to do something in EVE to come have fun with us. So thanks again, and have fun playing EVE. Fly smart.